Good day, ladies and gents. Today there is a very special piece of computer gear that we want to talk about. Indeed, in recent months, Intel and AMD have released a lot of compelling processors, but uh, here we wanted to push the idea of Prive Performance a little bit further, and this processor here kind of fit the bill for us. So, you'll be wondering, what is this thing? I've never seen anything like it. Well, that's hardly surprising, because it's a laptop processor modified to fit in a desktop motherboard. More specifically, this is a 9th Gen Xeon, the E2286M. Hold up, Xeon? For gaming? Yeah, we'll see the numbers in a bit, you'll see, this one is no slouch. So, more about the 2286M. It is a retail processor, it was located in uh, various workstation grade laptops, it features 8 core and 16 threads, an all core boost frequency of 4.2 gigahertz, that ramps up to 4.8 in single core loads. It boasts 16 megabytes of cache and a price tag of $190 Canadian. There are other SKUs available from these modified chips, but we felt like this one was the best bang for your buck. And since we're in the market of min-maxing performance for the price, we felt like this one fit the bill the best. Right about now you're probably thinking, what's the catch? Well, there's a couple things you need to know before you get into owning one of these processors. There's two in fact. This processor cannot run faster memory frequencies than DDR4-2666. Additionally, this may be a drawback to some, or simply an additional step in making this processor work. It requires a BIOS modification to be applied to the chosen motherboard. This mod can be executed using the Coffee Time application, and in a few cases, may require a BIOS flasher tool, such as the CH341A. Another important consideration is the cooler of choice. The CPU will run with a direct die contact with the cooler. This means that a cooler with a smooth, cold plate and no heat pipes exposed will be required. Liquid coolers are a great example here. The mounting pressure needs to be properly adjusted as well to avoid improper cooling and in the worst case scenario, damaging the die. The next points we have to talk about with this processor would be the motherboards that you can use it on. Now, even though it's an LGA 1151 processor, after the modifications, of course, um, it's not compatible in every single chipset. The ones that are tested and are known to be working well are H110, B150, B250, B365, Z170, Z270, as well as Z370. This opens up the option of buying used 6th and 7th gen motherboard and further decreases the average build cost. So that should be enough of an introduction for you guys with the technical details. Let's take a peek at how the processor handles itself in synthetic benchmarks. We took sample of default setting runs, and we also took samples using XTU, which is Intel's extreme tuning utility, to unlock the power limit. We thought it would be a good idea to put the 2286M up against the 10400F, since it's a similarly priced processor, as well as using the Ryzen 5 5600X and the i7-10700, who are respectively either a supposed value mid-range pick, or a similarly configured chip with a higher price tag. The testing methodology we elected to use is broken down into three segments, rendering, encoding, and compression-decompression. We chose Blander and Cinebench R15, as well as Cinebench R23 for the rendering tests, HWBOT X265 for encoding using a 1080p, as well as a 4K encoding benchmark, and lastly we used 7-Zip's built-in benchmark. By starting with the rendering results, we broke down the test in single thread as well as multi-core. Starting with the single threaded results, we can see that the Xeon is trading blows with the i7, having results within margin of error. The AMD processor is winning handily in this category, while the poor i5 is lagging far behind. Following up with the multi-core benchmarks, it appears that the i7 is scaling slightly better in those workloads while the 5600X and the Xeon are trading blows. The i5 is in the rear, sadly getting smoked here again. Carrying on to the Blender Junk Shop Demo Render, keep in mind that this benchmark heavily favors raw processor output and scales very well with cores. 
We can see the i7 here is taking a rather convincing lead, followed up by the Xeon, with the Ryzen chip hot on its tail. The poor i5 is kind of far behind, along with the stock configuration for the Xeon, where we can see that the all-core turbo with the locked power limit is rather low, since this is a laptop chip that's designed to run at 2.4 gigahertz. Following up with the Cinebench R23 benchmarks, the same trend is happening here, where in single core, the Xeon is keeping up with the i7, while in multi-core, the Xeon is trading blows with the Ryzen. Following on with the encoding tests, we can see that the i7 is the clear winner here, enjoying a higher all-core boost, edging out the other processors. Not that far behind, the 5600X and the Xeons are duking it out, with the 5600X barely edging out the Xeon. Lastly, the compression and decompression tests reveals that the Ryzen chip is winning handily, enjoying great optimization, while the i7 takes second place. The Xeon puts up a respectable showing, but is clearly the slower player in the leading trio. The main takeaway here is that those three common processors we stacked up against the Xeon, despite their very diverse configuration, allow us to have a clearer picture of how the BGA processor performs. What we want to express here is that while it's not bludgeoning the performance figures, it's also considerably less expensive than every other processor here except the i5. Taking that into consideration, we can clearly see that the Xeon is a value powerhouse. To test power consumption, we started by removing the dedicated graphics card from the system and limiting the variables that could affect power consumption reading, such as closing superfluous software. The total system power consumption was measured from the wall directly with a watt meter. The results show an idle power consumption of 25 watts, followed by 76 watt under Cinebench R23 multi-core load with the stock power limits enforced. Unlocking PL1 and PL2 results in the same idle power consumption, but 180 watts under Cinebench 23 multi-core loads. This represents a 136% increase over default configuration. It is estimated that the CPU's power consumption ranges from 120 to 140 watts on its own, meaning that it could benefit from a decently sized air cooler or even a liquid cooler. Now, on to the gaming benchmarks. We paired the Xeon with an RTX 3060 Ti as we feel that it's a great GPU option, both in terms of price and pairing. While it is not the best value for money graphics card on the market, or even the most powerful card on the market, it is a solid choice that is great at everything and that's readily available from the store shelves. All the games here were tested at 1080p with the highest possible game settings. However, we had RTX and DLSS off as we are interested in the CPU's performance without any GPU related enhancements. We chose to benchmark recent games such as Far Cry 6, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, City Skyline, and Control, using the i5-10400F, the Ryzen 5 5600X, and the 2286M. These games are likely to be played today by most gamers, and are varied in terms of hardware utilization. Some are more CPU heavy, such as City Skyline, other are more GPU heavy, such as Shadow of the Tomb Raider. All the CPUs were paired with the 3060 Ti to avoid any discrepancies between the results. First off, we will take a peek at the Far Cry 6 results. Right out the gates, the Ryzen processor puts up a convincing first place, enjoying a great optimization in this title. The Xeon is hot on its tail, with about 7 FPS less across the average and maximum FPS figures. The i5, slightly behind, but it falls off a cliff in the 0.1% lows, getting a very low dip in this metric. This usually indicates that the processor struggles to keep up with the graphics card. Following up, we will take a look at Shadow of the Tomb Raider. As we can see, the average FPS for all three tested processors are all quite closely grouped together, leading us to believe that the benchmark score for this game is GPU bound. This was also confirmed by the in-game benchmark results after each run. This means that the figures would have been considerably better with a more powerful graphics card. Looking over at the minimum FPS, which is a better metric to measure here, we can see that the two Intel processors are neck and neck. This is because both processors have similar all-core frequencies, and this game does not solicit the entirety of the cores on the Xeon. 
The Ryzen processor is lagging behind by a small margin, but nonetheless delivering comparable performance to the rest. The minor differences shown would almost certainly not be perceivable during gameplay. Third up on the roster, we have the numbers for City's Skyline. Unfortunately, the test map we used to generate those results was a little too demanding, and we could not get a lot of useful information from the 1% and 0.1% lows as we wished we could. The results show the game's heavy load on the processor. On the average FPS, we can see the riser processors taking the cake by about 18% in average FPS over to Xeon. Both Intel processors are neck and neck with the i5 lagging ever so slightly behind. Last but not least, we have the numbers for control, and this one left us a good bit puzzled. The i5 ended up beating everyone else. What was even stranger was the performance in the 0.1% FPS scores, where the i5 scores 60% better than the 5600X, while the Xeon lags behind too. I have no explanation for this, we ended up running the benchmark several times on each configuration, and ended up with the same results every single time. This one seems like an anomaly, but I'm happy to see the little i5 get a spot in the limelight. The Ryzen and Xeon traded blows, one had a bit better of average FPS, while the other had better 0.1% lows. In terms of average FPS, all processors are within 10% of each other, making them great choice, despite the, you know, the odd frame time spikes we've seen. So there we have it, that's all we had to show today. The main takeaway we got from this testing was that the 2286M is a very real contender to gain entry to mid-range gaming. It was able to keep up with components that were considerably more expensive. The goal today was to present an alternative to mainstream processors for the price performance minded individuals out there, as well as present you the kind of numbers you can expect from a sample configuration using this processor. You could likely use up to an RTX 3080 without any issues, as we ended up GPU bound on the 3060 Ti and most of the benchmarks. Keeping in mind the motherboard choices you have available and the involvement regarding BIOS modding, limited RAM speed and cooler choices, this processor is nonetheless an impressive contender and will offer great performance for the price if you are willing to tinker a bit with it. That was it for us, thank you and see you next time.